Real Madrid is a team that is always ahead of its time, both in terms of the football played and in media terms. The club constantly strives to be ahead of the others, which is why it carefully crafts a plan. The trend is that this approach will continue in the coming years, as Real Madrid has a well-structured plan to dominate Europe in the upcoming seasons. Throughout this video, you will also have the opportunity to understand how they intend to achieve this goal. Real Madrid has built a very solid foundation in the last 10 to 15 years, maintaining highly competitive teams without drastically altering its structure. During this period, Real Madrid had players such as Sergio Ramos, Casemiro, Cruz, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Bale, forming a consistent core that resulted in five Champions League titles. However, the current season indicates the gradual closure of this cycle, with planned departures of players like Cruz and Modric, who, while of high quality, no longer maintain the same level of performance. The club is naturally transitioning to younger players, giving opportunities to talents like Chaman, Camavinga, and Valverde, as evidenced by Cruz and Modric frequently being on the bench. This is the first point, demonstrating that Real Madrid understands the right time to transition between generations without making a complete overhaul all at once. Number 2. Without dwelling on gratitude, I believe that in this regard, Real Madrid provides a true lesson and is likely to continue doing so in the coming years, as Florentino Perez is very clear in this regard. Regardless of the history you build within Real Madrid, there comes a time when you are no longer delivering as expected or are of an advanced age, and the club has no problem in releasing, letting go. Thus, you can perceive that in recent years, Real Madrid did this with Cristiano Ronaldo, by not agreeing to give him the contract he wanted to compete with Messi. Real Madrid also did this with Sergio Ramos, when Ramos requested a contract extension, Florentino Perez did not agree. It's more or less along these lines that Real Madrid follows, there is no idea of gratitude. Real Madrid recognizes the players' contributions to the club, but if it is understood that they are not part of the project for the future, the club does not hesitate to release the player regardless of who they are or what they have achieved. As exemplified by Sergio Ramos, who, in the end, proved to be a correct decision, as he wanted a contract for two to three years, but Real Madrid was only willing to offer one. He went to PSG, and in his first season, he barely played due to various injuries. This is just an example to illustrate that Real Madrid often does not act based on gratitude and is right in making this kind of decision. Comparatively, other European clubs, like Barcelona, spent a long time living on gratitude, renewing with players for astronomical amounts and contributing to the financial crisis of the club. Number 3, renewals with high buyout clauses are happening because Real Madrid is transitioning to a new generation and has no problem parting ways with older players, even if they are idols. At this moment, Madrid is investing in renewing contracts of young players with the potential to become club protagonists. In recent weeks, Real Madrid has already secured four important renewals and has another one well underway. The club renewed with Vinicius Jr. until 2027, Rodrigo until 2028, while Eduardo Camavinga and Federico Valverde renewed until 2029. Another renewal in progress is that of the Brazilian defender Eder Militao expected to be until 2028 or 2029. The common detail in all these renewals is that they are of young players who will stay with the club for at least seven to eight years, 
with intelligent buyout clauses. Real Madrid was very astute in renewing the contracts of these players, like Vinicius and Rodrigo, including a 1 billion euros buyout clause, a practically unpayable amount for any club in the world. This decision aims to protect the club against possible crazy offers from other clubs, as happened in the case of Neymar at Barcelona, where everyone doubted they would pay the 222 million euros buyout clause, but PSG did. The application of a 1 billion euros buyout clause makes it practically impossible for another club to sign these players without Real Madrid's agreement. The club thus ensures that these players stay for as long as Real Madrid desires, unless the club accepts an offer. Number 4. Recruiting New Talents As if renewing the contracts of young and promising players weren't enough, Real Madrid also maintains its position in the market by signing some of the world's top talents. I can provide three examples of Real Madrid's recent signings. First, Jude Bellingham. Despite quickly becoming a key player for the Real Madrid team, Bellingham's signing was not intended for him to immediately shine. At just 20 years old, he arrived for just over 100 million euros, seen as a name for the future, not to immediately stand out. However, he excelled to the point of taking on a leading role in the team. Real Madrid planned for the long term with Bellingham, envisioning a period of 10 to 12 years with the club. Arda Guler, who was at Fenerbahce in Turkey, is another talented player that Real Madrid is gradually developing, gradually integrating him into the team. Another player already well known, especially in Brazil, is Hendrik, an attacker from Palmeiras. He has already been signed for the upcoming 2024 season and was recently called up to the Brazilian national team. Real Madrid already has a base of players who play and are protagonists. Now, they are adding these young protagonists to other talents they believe can complement them. In the end, Real Madrid will have, for the next 10 to 12 years, some of the best players in the world on their team, all together. Number 5, a new revenue stream with the new Bernabeu. As I mentioned in the introduction to this video, Real Madrid is not a team that relies solely on football. Real Madrid thrives on status, media, and business. Thus, the club is renovating the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, giving it a new structure, including new seats. Additionally, Real Madrid will use the Santiago Bernabeu for events and conventions, hosting internal rentals. With this, the team gains increasingly new revenues. Whether they like it or not, Real Madrid is a money-making machine, and the new Santiago Bernabeu will contribute significantly in this regard. In addition to providing a new structure for fans and the team in general, the stadium will have a retractable pitch and new experiences for fans to enjoy and spend money during games. Real Madrid thinks of everything, not just scoring goals, but literally every process. That's why Real Madrid is truly a differentiated team. Now, I would like to hear from you. In the comments, do you think that with these five steps I've outlined, Real Madrid will continue to dominate European football in the coming years? Share your opinion, as I am very interested in hearing what you think. So, folks, that was the video for this Sunday. I deeply appreciate your company in another video on the channel. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share, comment, and follow me on social media. We're together until tomorrow and until the next video.